Hey everybody, it's Jimmy and Ange. So today what we're gonna talk about, Ange, is how the young generation has it worse than we did. You know, like back then, like we did better than our parents, but okay. now it's the opposite. Oh and yeah. What we're gonna talk about today is, um, and how this whole thing came up was, I see all these young people struggling to try to buy a home. So it's not just home, it's not just real estate that they're having a hard time with. They're having a hard time across everything. Even with the, all the technology these days we didn't have, we had it a lot easier. Like the average person that's buying a house right now is like 56 years old. Yeah, I saw that recently, yeah. You know, I think I bought my first house when I was 21. So I was 87, so figure 83, I was 18, so I bought mine at like 26. No, like 18 and another four years. So I bought it yeah. at 23, 23. So what we're going to be talking about, you know, young generations, why they're having a hard time. And I want, you know, you guys, younger people watching this, tell me if I'm on point or I'm talking out of my butt. But in the meantime, there's some really, really cool videos coming out. I'm going to have some special guests coming on soon. So hit the subscribe button so you don't miss those and hit the bell and share. It really helps out the channel and you don't want to miss those videos. So basically, the first thing is that they're having a hard time with is education costs. Education costs is just stupid. Education is, is, the cost of education is extremely high because of student loans. Bottom line, student loans. Yeah, but you know, and a lot what, of think they're gonna get well, forgiven. Go ahead. Well, forget the forgiving part. This, this is what I'm getting at. The cost of a school doesn't go up because you know, I went to college, you went to college, and it's not like you, they're putting in new bathrooms and gymnasiums and building buildings, which they sometimes do and sometimes don't. But what I'm saying is like, you know, it's not like the way housing costs goes up. You know, it's just me talking to you from a book about what education is. What it is is that the, the government gives out more guaranteed student loans. So they keep upping the number. So they say, like, when we went to school, maybe it was you could go up to, say, 25000 for four years of college, guaranteed student loan, and pay it back. At, back then, I think it was like 8%. Now, like, school goes, the government says, oh, we'll give you 75000 So school doesn't say, well, we're only 25000 to go here. The school says, oh, we're 150000 It's like they just keep raising their rates. Yeah, and, like, you know... So basically, like UCLA, and, I, hang on, I went to UCLA. UCLA has an endowment. That's a public school, UCLA, right? It's a state school. For me to go as a California resident at the time, I think it cost me 24000 for four years of school. It was like six grand, and that was with room and board all year, right? Food was a little extra because, you know, how you right. eat. And so now UCLA is like, I'm not even sure. It's probably like 80,000, 85,000, right? But here's the crazy part. UCLA has an endowment fund that's like worth over like $1.5 billion that they have stocked in a bank somewhere. And it's because you're paying such high fees to go to the college and they know it doesn't it costs X amount of dollars to run. At, at the end of the day, it's, they're making uh, money. Yeah, they're yeah, making money hand over fist. And and now they don't need hard books, they have digital books. Yeah, so. And the problem is is that kids then put themselves in debt to go to these schools. And when they come out, the university tells them like, "Oh, you're going to get a job as a, an IT engineer." Yeah, there is no IT. Well, that's what jobs. leads us into the next thing: stagnant wages. Yeah, you know. So basically, the you know inflation. You know, despite the rising cost of living, wage growth is not keeping up the pace. No. So uh, they, well, and they're going to these colleges, and they're 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 promised a lot. You know, and some people, you know, like not not for nothing. I know you're in the entertainment business and stuff. But I know a few people that, you know, went out to L.A. to become actors and they don't yeah. realize how hard it is. Oh, that's that like when, one in a billion. You're better off. You win lotto. You'll win the Powerball before you get that, before you become a famous actor. Like the school that me and you went to school, I know three or four people that literally said, good for them, okay? Good for them. They're going to L.A. They're going to make it as an actor and actress. You know, and they went to school for it, and they paid a lot of money for it. It's a ripoff. Go ahead. You know, to become. Uh, yeah, I don't, I don't know it, what it's, it takes. it's. You go to like the, the acting school. You know, go to the, you're part of the theater department. They're teaching you how to act. Yeah, and then they had to join these unions or yeah, something. Well, they joined SAG or AFTRA, which is you know, but you got to. That's even a nightmare to get into. That's kind of hard to get into because you got to have already gotten like three speaking roles, and then you got to pay two thousand dollars. It's a lot. Like I'm in, I'm in a couple of different guilds. They're not unions. They're guilds, and I'm in a few different ones. 
and it's like they don't do anything for you i'm gonna be honest with you they do nothing for you because you still if you don't acquire hours you don't get your insurance you don't get your retirement and they don't get you jobs you have to go it's not like the team says right okay so basically that's what we're doing that young people you know they're going for careers that when they get out after they spend all that money they're not getting for us we did a lot of blue collar stuff yeah you know we have and, a lot of friends that became cops and firemen and plumbers and, yeah, and, and, and then yeah uh, and electrical those, engineers yeah there was always work for the blue collar stuff uh, and there always will be work like we didn't have the dot com boom and you know making websites and doing you know that didn't happen until 92 yeah so but by then we were already blue collar like when i got out of school I we're think, analog yeah we were i was fixing microwaves i think yeah you know? we're analog and we got to transition to digital so we saw both sides of, as I'll say, technology. So we're old school and new school. So when you look at something, you have a lot to draw on from like, you know, this is how it used to work and this is how I understand to fix it. A lot of these kids today only have new school, meaning they straight up digital. They, have, they don't have a real understanding of how it was put together. Right, when I went to school, like, you know, and I work, I went for like basically computer repair and stuff like that. They would be like, oh, you take this computer board and this diode or this resistor is bad. You unsolder it and put a new one on. These days, they're like, oh, the board's bad. Throw it out. Just buy a new board. Put a new board in. Yeah, you know? and, and it, they don't realize it, like what it takes. Okay, so we're going back to the housing market challenges. We could do a whole video on that. It's just back in the day, um, my father um, was able to just, he was the only person working. And I had two brothers plus me. My father took care of a house that we owned. We had... Ran his own business. Yeah, ran his own business. He had yeah. the gas station. Two cars, a house. And I'm not saying we were rich, but... You did, you did good for yourself. Your on father, one income. That's it. Your father did good for you. And, you, and your house, I know your house. Yeah. You, you didn't have a small house, my friend. No, no, but it was one income back yeah. in, on Long Island of all places. Yeah, with high property taxes. I mean, high for back then, you know? So, and so these days... I don't know of any single kid, young kid, that bought a house. Everybody either bought a house with somebody else or it was always taking two incomes or the parents came in or the only time I see a young person with a house is if it was an, an inheritance. Either that or they, they did get out of college with something good. And what I mean by something good is like they're in finance. Um, not even a doctor. I'm, I'm not even. Or they they went to a really good law school and they come out and they're getting paid. You know that 150, 200 thousand a year to start, but still they're not buying anything at that point. They're still renting, but they're renting on a high end. Yeah, and the young kids are having a problem too. Is it brings it to the next one? Is because it's it's a gig economy instability. You know, it says many young well, people are working a gig, that's, a freelance job. That's the entertainment industry and provide benefits like health insurance or retirement plans. See, the entertainment industry is a gig industry. So you get you come on a show as an actor or a producer or an editor or a writer and it's just for that gig. So if it's 20 episodes or 10 episodes, whatever it is, you're working for that. And when that's over, everyone scatters because now you got to go find the next job. Now, don't get me wrong. You could still want it working with the same people from show to show to show because you just everything is trending. Like everyone, every executive producer just go, just take those guys. They work great together, and you just move them over. But it does have its its lulls where all of a sudden it dries up and there's nothing going on. And if you're in the unions, if you don't get X amount of hours in a certain amount of time, you lose your insurance coming up. Like you got to make 400 hours every every so every so many it's like i think it's a quarter right. or six months or you get nothing once it runs out right. that's the gig and yeah. and that's a good but but, that's but, a but, good gig yeah but the, the, they're having a hard time now the okay. other now let's talk about the bad gigs the ones that are like you know that you're talking about here where people are like you know they're working in restaurants or they're doing some kind of construction for while they build this and then it vanishes and then they can't get into the construction job because that guy had hi to hire ditch diggers right and there's no ditch digger jobs you know no i totally agree so that's that's another reason why they're having you know decline in job security right now it's like during our time blue collar you know if you're a welder or you're a car mechanic oh you could work or, for 30 years at the same the same job yeah easily easily even uh, you go to retirement they beg you not to yeah back then but now you know with these jobs and ai you know like like the ai revolution is taking over it's going to hurt your business oh it's like it, you know it's going to 
It's got you a know, lot of things. Eventually, AI will get good enough that AI will create its own character, its own actor or actress that will never age. Well, here's here's another thing. Not even going into that. Like, think about this. AI is also mechanical. You know, like car welding. You know, flipping burgers. Yeah, you know, yeah, all that yeah, kind yeah. of you know ro thing. robotics. Right. So ask yourself this. If, if a lot of these McDonald's, Burger King, Wendy's, whoever it is, fast food places in general, start replacing, you know, like instead of having 15 people working behind the counter, they only have five working behind the counter. So my question is, is that is, is the government going to turn around and say, like, hey, we got to start paying the AI like a salary because we need to collect taxes to pay the people who well, are working? Well, in California, working? They, were, they were talking about that like because people are like, oh, you, you have the $20, $20 minimum wage for fast food unless you're a bread company or something like that. Yeah, <laughs> I know. It's wacky. <laughs> but um, If you're Panera. Yeah, um, but I think they, they took that away. Um, but then they, what's going to happen is they're like, oh, we'll just get robots to do all this stuff. And they're like, well, we need to collect our taxes from somebody. Like right now, like the electric cars, they're not paying gas tax because they're not putting gas in there. But they're going to say, hey, you got to pay us per mile. They Now, that's funny you mentioned that. I had a Prius back in L.A. for, for about two years. Um, and... When I got it, you know, I used to put like honestly like ten dollars a month in gas in it, and I would go like everywhere. So it was beautiful because I also had a truck, an Escalade, which would cost me one hundred and sixty bucks a week in gas mm -hmm. to go everywhere. And when I got my uh, registration renewal, because the first one went through the dealership, you know, because it's brand new, but then you do the, the next one on your right. own, mm -hmm. and the next one was like through the ceiling because they were getting of uh, like highway tax because they were like you're not using gas. You yeah, know, so my registration but, but was that's more, gonna, my electrical registration right. was more and, than a gas registration. And, and that's what they're going to start doing, you know. Yeah. And, and the other thing that the people in the 20s and 30s are going to, are having a hard time right now is, you know, retirement plans. Back in our days growing up in, you know, 70s, 80s. You had a pension. Yeah, you had a pension, you had a retirement plan. Like, if you like, it was a big joke. Oh, you work for the post office, you're good for the rest of your life. Or you work for a union or this and that. Those all those benefits are getting cut dramatically. Mo most of, mostly all those jobs are gone. I mean, even if you're a police officer today, they're not even offering as good a deal as they well, did yeah, back I in mean, the day. Well, yeah, I mean, it's we have reduced union representation. Yeah. Unions used to be huge back yeah. in the 60s, 70s, Well, you, 80s. unions, you know, I don't want to speak bad about unions. You no, know, I'm not speaking bad about no, unions, no, but, but I'm just saying, saying the facts. That a union is a double-edged sword. Like, it can do good and it can it can hurt. Right. You know, so it's like because they can get greedy themselves and like ask. And, and I want to tell you guys the the biggest thing that I think that um, towards the end of this video, why I think they have it worse off than us, and it's probably nothing you guys could think of per se, but in my opinion, it is. Oh, I I got an opinion on that too. <laughs> so so basically, an, another thing that the young people are having, we didn't have as much global competition as we do now. I was just going to bring that up, that because when you were talking about the jobs and like the the, the market's not that great, mm -hmm. well, you don't have to do these jobs in America anymore, like cause especially because of you know technology. Right. So you can you know you can do a lot of these. Like let's take a call center. Now, if you remember back in the '80s and we were in high school, like all the girls we knew all worked in call centers. Mm -hmm. Remember they used to at night and they'd be selling you know yeah, whatever a little it was. Or yeah, something some yeah, stupid yeah, yeah. stuff for like six bucks an hour or whatever. Yeah. Um, and now all those things are done in the Philippines and Vietnam and, you know, China and wherever else. And it's funny because when you call like that tech support and you get the guy in Indonesia and his name is Frank, you know, and he's like, hello, my name is Frank. And you hear the Indian accent, but he's like, he speaks very good English for someone who's like, a, it's a second or third language. But all those jobs vanish. Like there's very few, like I know when I call, say, T-Mobile, I have to ask them, can I get a U.S. operator? like someone in America to deal with. And they'll get me somebody. But when you dial in originally, it's straight overseas. But, you know, not for nothing, you know, when everybody like, oh, we'll just hire for everybody so everything has to be done in the States. You know, we are more expensive to produce things. It's the facts. We are um, for, you know, but here's the thing. Stuff that's made in America is always made better, too. Well, yeah, I agree with that, but at, the same, but at the same time, it's 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 more expensive. If you, if you yeah, but 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 it's made better. That's why it's more expensive. Take a T-shirt made in America. Take a T-shirt made in Vietnam. Nothing against the well, Vietnam well, T-shirt, but it's not going to last as long. But, okay, here's another thing that you know, young uh, people, the pressure you know to have a side gig. You know, like back then when we had a job, we had a job. We didn't go and work a second job. Now you, as a young person, you have to have like 
Three jobs, three things, or like a side gig. They like have like eBay, all they have like, Amazon. Well, they have like three part-time things. Like Monday and Wednesday they work here, Tuesday and Thursday they work there, and Friday and Saturday they're working here. Or they're doing their, they work at you know Publix during the day, and at night they're an Uber driver. Yeah, and and, and you know another thing that the young people are having a hard time with that just ch- childcare too. Back in the day, our mothers pretty much, you know, I'm not, they stayed home. My mom worked, but then she w- but she only worked when we got old enough, you know. Right, but when we were kids. But oh, now, she was but, home. But, we but were now, kids, yeah. from you know, just from being one years old, you know, if they're not a stay-at-home mom, they got they have to work, and sometimes you know, yeah, they can work from home, but it, it they had it easy. They have a harder time right now. Oh, a lot with child harder. care. Well, not only that, I mean, child care is expensive because you know the, it, it's become a real job. You know, but then again, I, I don't argue with child care being expensive because I'd rather pay someone that's very qualified, you know, to take care of my one or two year old. Yeah, but I don't want to just pay some banana head off the street. Yeah. OK, here's the, here's my big thing. What I think we had a better. OK, is the political divide. OK, during the 70s, 80s, what I could talk about. OK. Democrats and Republicans okay independence we all pretty much got along yes i had a lot of friends that were both sides of the aisle yeah both sides of the aisle and i remember for the longest time there was a democratic um democrat as a president for the longest time well we went you know we had uh clinton and um you know before that i'm talking about i remember jimmy carter most of the presidents were all democrat prior yeah reagan was republican but reagan used to be a democrat nixon Nixon was a republican yeah nixon was republican ford was republican but but my point is we didn't we got along yeah there, there was no discord people like you just you just you just you agreed to disagree and that was it you didn't like there was no try to burn down the house yeah it's just like it's nuts right now, like this political. You have families that won't even talk to each other. I've never experienced that in my life. You know, it's just like people are like, like it's like a freaking war. It's it's not. We both we all live in the same freaking country. You well, know? you you can almost you can pinpoint when it started if you really want to get. I mean, I, I'm not going to bring it no, up. Don't bring but it you up. Can te- I, get technical but, to when yeah, it all started. Yeah, but I don't. It's, I'm not trying to be a political thing, but. I think that's the biggest disadvantage young people have, and I think I blame it on both sides on the education format. I get, I feel like, you know, when you go to certain schools, instead of just teaching. Oh yeah, they're they're, they're politicizing. They're everything. politicizing yes. everything. That's what I think on both sides. Okay, they're politicizing, and I think for these young people to have a good quality of life and their kids have a good quality of life things need to stabilize people need to start getting along and you know these politicians that are coming into office they're only in for a short period of time okay vote i'm a great well, vote here's the thing technically they're not in for a short period of time some of these politicians have been there three four five six terms there should be term limits, and you should, you know, send them off their no, way. I, I agree with that. Because then you won't get this, this, this but argumentation. You can vote them out, but it just, you know, fighting with your neighbors because of politics is is stupid. And like, you know, when people have political signs in on their front of their house, believe me, okay, I have nothing against it, whatever it says, but. People aren't going to drive down and saying, oh, look at look what, who, who's on that political side. I'm changing my mind. I'm going to go vote for that person. It doesn't work that way. No, it doesn't. You're just basically saying who you're supporting. But what people should, like in my neighborhood, we have a lot of both sides of the aisle. When I walk my dog around, I would see the, you know, the, the Democratic signs. I would see the you're Republican right. signs. I don't have any signs in front of my house. I'm actually independent to start with. So, but I would just be like, you know, like, hey, that's cool. That doesn't make you a bad person if you believe no, in what no, they no. do. No, 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 I'm not, I'm not saying No, that, I know but, you're but, not saying but, it, but that's how people look at it. What I'm just saying it. is that the young people generation is they're growing up in a political divide, yeah, and this, I think it's bad. But yeah, but this election that just happened recently, like some of that has changed now. A lot of the, and I've seen it because I've seen the interviews on news channels and stuff where they've been interviewing young kids about okay. it. A lot of them of of uh, uh, look at what their parents either had or have, and right. they're they're actually starting to smarten up these kids. Well, let me tell you this: news is not news. They're they're 
their um, opinion channels. Oh, like totally, one hundred percent. It's it's talk radio basically in a way. I don't care if it's CNN. I don't care if it's Fox. I don't care. They, they have an agenda. It's a it's an opinion channel. There, yeah. there is no news anymore. There's no that's black that you know what I mean. Just just reporting what happened on the day and that's it. Yeah, yeah. black and white. What yeah. happened in the day and that's it. I don't know of any of those. Well, it's we just, grew up where there was only basically. Well, three real channels, like three, ABC, three NBC, C and CBS. CBS. Those were the networks. And we had Channel 5 and 11, which were like the local, you know, Fox. Yeah, but they, they did just state the news. Yeah, but it's like those channels did the news. And it was like, you know, at 6 and 6.30 kind of thing. And then 11, 11.30. Right. Well, okay, and that was so, it. So what's, you said you. Now it's 24-7. You seven. said you had something you wanted to add for the younger. What's Why does the younger youth have it worse than us? Because they're not. I, I don't want to insult them in a way. Well, don't. They're just not, they, they, they're, they're not tough. They can't take it. Like, it, they can be insulted, like, instantly. If, if, if you have a gray shirt on and I go, oh, that shirt's ugly, they curl up in a corner. You know, they, like, we grew up, we, I'm not saying we knew we were going to have a fight every day. You know, that kind of thing. But if someone we, said we, something we, to us, we, we gave them the look. We, like, what's we, your problem? We had thinkers. We had thinkers. Yeah, it's exactly. It's thick skin. And they don't today. And they get offended by every little thing. You know, you, what do you guys think? Do you think the younger youth gets offended by every little thing? They do. Even if you're younger, you know? I'm not saying everybody. No, but, it's not everybody. But what, what's funny is it's you only need the one rotten apple to spoil the whole entire barrel. You know what I'm saying? So that's the problem. You see the one and it affects a whole lot. So you think that's why they have it worse than us? Yeah, because they just don't have like, you know, put it this way. When did it become fashionable to go to school or work in your like sweatpants or pajama bottoms? I mean, honestly. I, I'm on I'm on sets, movie sets, TV show sets, and I see I see producers and screenwriters come in wearing like their Simpsons velvety pajama bottoms, and they're wearing like you know s slippers, and they got some crazy pullover. Really? Oh yeah, and you're like like I would never go, I would never show up to set. And I'd always be in a collared shirt, long pants, and action, never sneakers, actually like a hiking boot in a way, because of what could be on the floor around you. But I was always, I always had my watch on, and it was like, I was always ready to go. But I would see people, I would see people show up so the you, way I'm dressed so right now. So you're saying that shorts. the younger generation is going to have it worse because... Uh, they, they got no respect for themselves. Do you notice back back in, you ever see the old videos of the turn of the century, 1909, you know, like... Every every woman had a dress. I'm not saying it was right, but every guy had a top hat. And yeah, and a tie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the way it was. And they yeah. were young. These these guys. Think about this. Real. This and this. We'll end it with this. Okay. Think about it. The Greatest Generation. These were kids that were 16, 17, 18 years old that went and fought the Germans. Now I'm not trying to knock the Germans. I'm not going to get into any of that. But these were 16. Some of these kids were lying about their age to go fight for their country. Like, I don't know. I mean, there are people today who joined the military. Yes, and God bless them and thank the Lord for them. But these back then, kids doing this was like insane. Today, if we had a draft today and drafted people, do you know how populated Canada would become overnight? <laughs> overnight. Canada's, Canada's population overnight would increase by like 300 million. Yeah, well, they might have a draft again of people because they're having a hard time recruiting people. Yeah. It's Anyways, insane. what do you guys think? You know, you think that the younger generation has the worst than Gen X? Do me a favor. Um, consider subscribing. It really helps out the channel. Check out this video over here. I picked it out just for you guys. And always give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And we'll talk to you in the next one. Adios.